Summary, how deep brain stimulation repairs neural pathways to end the addiction cycle. Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Whether you're looking for medical insights, the latest healthcare trends, or fun educational content, there's something here for you. Drug addiction causes 11.8 million deaths each year, surpassing all cancer deaths combined. It has prompted experts to research other treatment modalities for addiction. One with increasingly crucial importance is deep brain stimulation for addiction, which is a relatively novel area of neurological research. About 85% of people with an addiction relapse within a year of quitting, despite decades of traditional treatments, highlighting the long-lasting neurobiological alterations that define addictive disorders. In 2023, there were 112,000 overdose deaths in the U.S. alone, underscoring the pressing need for novel therapeutic strategies. Relapse rates for current psychological and pharmacological treatments for addiction range from 75% to 98%, which is a disappointing result. By directly altering the neural circuits responsible for addictive behaviors, brain surgery for addiction, more especially targeted deep brain stimulation for addiction, offers a promising substitute. The nucleus accumbens, a crucial component of the brain's reward system, is one of the specific brain regions to which this addiction brain implant delivers controlled electrical impulses. There is growing clinical evidence in favor of addiction to brain implant technology. Three patients out of five showed a significant decrease in alcohol consumption over an eight-year follow-up period, and two others who received deep brain stimulation for alcohol addiction treatment maintained total abstinence for several years. Additionally, it has been demonstrated that experimental deep brain stimulation treatment cuts dopamine flow to the nucleus accumbens by almost half, which may alter the neurochemical underpinnings of addictive behaviors. Although it has not yet received FDA approval, deep brain stimulation for drug addiction expands on the technology's successful use in more than 160,000 patients worldwide for a range of neurological and psychiatric disorders since the 1980s. Preliminary human research shows encouraging outcomes in reducing cravings and substance use, while animal studies consistently show decreased drug-seeking behavior after deep brain stimulation intervention. How this neuromodulation method can heal neural pathways and possibly end the cycle of addiction is examined in the sections that follow. Neurobiology of addiction. Addiction stems from dysfunctions in the brain's reward, motivation, and memory systems. Central to this is dopamine dysregulation in the nucleus accumbens. Initially, addictive substances heighten dopamine release. However, with prolonged use, this effect diminishes, leading to tolerance and craving. Simultaneously, the prefrontal cortex, responsible for judgment and impulse control, shows reduced activity and connectivity, making relapse more likely. The three-stage addiction cycle binge intoxication. Drugs overstimulate dopamine release in the basal ganglia. Over time, cues alone can trigger cravings. Withdrawal, negative affect. The extended amygdala becomes involved, producing stress-related chemicals and emotional dysphoria. Preoccupation anticipation. The prefrontal cortex loses regulatory control, heightening obsession and drug-seeking behaviors. How deep brain stimulation modulates neural circuits. DBS restores balance in dysregulated circuits using several mechanisms. GABA release. High-frequency stimulation increases GABA in the nucleus accumbens, calming hyperactive drug-seeking circuits. Disruption of oscillations. DBS reduces pathological beta oscillations, promoting healthier brain rhythms. Neuroplasticity. Deep brain stimulation reverses drug-induced adaptations and improves synaptic balance, with effects persisting after stimulation ends. Network-wide impact. Stimulation of the nucleus accumbens also activates prefrontal regions via antidromic signaling, enhancing executive function. Targeting the nucleus accumbens, shell versus core. The nucleus. Accumbens is divided into two subregions. Shell responds more to drug-associated cues and is more sensitive to dopaminergic modulation. Deep brain stimulation here reduces cue-induced drug-seeking. Core. Involved in action execution. Core DBS affects established drug-taking behaviors and may be substance-specific. Accurate electrode placement down to the submillimeter is critical for therapeutic outcomes. 
clinical evidence and substance-specific results. Alcohol use disorder. Several long-term studies show sustained abstinence or reduced consumption with minimal side effects. Opioid use disorder case reports show prolonged abstinence. A US-based FDA trial reports early success. Stimulant addiction, mixed results. Some patients improve, others do not, often due to electrode misplacement or placebo effects. Technical variables that influence success. Timing. Deep brain stimulation or DBS during withdrawal appears more effective than during active use. Frequency. Both high, 160 Hz, and low, 20 Hz frequencies can be effective, depending on the condition and target region. Electrode configuration. Unilateral deep brain stimulation may offer similar benefits to bilateral stimulation with fewer side effects. Emerging targets. Subthalamic nucleus, STN, shows promise in cocaine addiction by affecting behavioral inhibition. Insula. Disruptions here can curb cravings linked to internal state awareness. Orbitofrontal cortex, OFC. Involved in decision-making. DBS here may reduce compulsive use and enhance flexibility. Conclusion. 1. Potentially revolutionary method for treating severe treatment-resistant addiction is deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation successfully disrupts the pathological neural circuits that underlie addictive behaviors through many complementary mechanisms. High-frequency stimulation promotes long-lasting neuroplastic changes that can undo drug-induced adaptations, increase GABA release, and stop aberrant oscillatory patterns. The basic brain dysregulations that underlie the three-stage cycle of addiction – preoccupation, anticipation, withdrawal, negative affect, and binge intoxication – are addressed by these mechanisms working in concert. It becomes clear that choosing the right target is crucial to the effectiveness of treatment. Core stimulation mainly influences the behavioral execution aspects of addiction, whereas the nucleus accumbens shell is particularly effective at reducing the perception of drug rewards. Therefore, for therapy to be effective, exact electrode placement, sometimes to sub-millimeter accuracy, remains crucial. By improving top-down control over compulsive behaviors, Antidromic activation of prefrontal regions from nucleus accumbens stimulation probably significantly increases treatment efficacy. Although preliminary, clinical evidence shows encouraging outcomes. Long-term research on alcohol use disorders shows that nucleus accumbens stimulation can help some patients achieve total abstinence for longer than four years. Long-term abstinence after deep brain stimulation intervention is also shown in case reports for opioid addiction. The results of stimulant addiction are more inconsistent, which emphasizes the necessity of continuously improving the parameters of stimulation and targeting. Other factors for optimization include electrode configuration, stimulation frequency, and timing of intervention. While both high-frequency and low-frequency stimulation shows efficacy depending on the target structure and substance involved, Deep brain stimulation during withdrawal phases shows particular promise for preventing relapse. Unilateral techniques offer similar advantages with potentially fewer side effects, although bilateral stimulation remains the standard. There are many new targets outside the nucleus accumbens that need more research. Particularly promising for cocaine-seeking behaviors is the subthalamic nucleus. In the meantime, the orbitofrontal cortex's function in decision-making and the insula's role in interoceptive awareness make these areas attractive substitute targets for addiction brain implants. Even with positive outcomes, several obstacles remain to be overcome. Target selection and stimulation parameters must be tailored to the individual due to the diversity of addiction disorders. It's important to carefully navigate the ethical issues surrounding irreversible brain interventions for addiction. Furthermore, widespread clinical implementation is not possible until cost-effectiveness thresholds are met. Closed-loop systems that can identify abnormal brain activity and only provide targeted stimulation when necessary are probably the way of the future for DBS for addiction. This strategy promises to increase effectiveness while reducing side effects, especially when paired with a better understanding of the neurocircuitry underlying addiction. Deep brain stimulation is therefore positioned to become a vital tool for ending the cycle of addiction in patients who have tried every other form of treatment as research advances. Thanks for watching our global RPH production. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, 
Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. We're bringing you a dynamic mix of content across a variety of topics, so there's always something fresh, engaging, and insightful just for you. Your support means the world to us. It helps us grow and keep delivering exciting high-value content. Stay tuned because the best is yet to come.